about blending turtles today. I just want to remind all of my friends joining us out there on Facebook Live, feel free to ask questions at any time. Um, the more questions you have for me, the more fun I have, so don't be shy. Um, so without further ado, blanding turtles. Um, blanding turtles are a local species of turtle here in Massachusetts. Um, you may be familiar with them, you may not be familiar with them. If anyone joined us this spring, you probably met Skip, our adult Blanding's turtle. But today, we're gonna talk about juvenile Blanding's turtles and specifically yearlings. So little tiny Blanding's turtles, um, like the ones you can see moving around the tank here behind me. They're being a little bit camera shy right now, so we'll, we'll pull one out in a little bit so you can get a closer look. Um, but the reason we wanted to share a little bit about these Blanding's turtles today is because they are part of a very special program to help with Blanding's turtles conservation. Um, Blanding's turtles are an endangered species here in Massachusetts, and so there are a lot of folks working really hard to help build the population of these Blanding's turtles in the wild. Um, so first, let's talk a little bit about where you can find Blanding's turtles and why they are an endangered species. So I have my handy distribution map here. Um, as you can see, the red spots show where blending turtles can be found in the wild. So you're going to notice the big red spot is uh, centered around the Great Lakes. So this is primarily where you're finding blending turtles. But if you look really carefully, right over here, we also have a population of them here in New England, and specifically in Massachusetts, in eastern Massachusetts. Um, so probably at one point, this whole habitat range was connected, but the major challenge facing Blanding's turtles is something called habitat fragmentation, which sounds kind of like a fancy science word, but if you break it down, it's actually pretty simple. So habitat being their home or where they're found in the wild, and fragmentation, um, fragment broken into smaller pieces, so their home is being broken into smaller pieces. Pretty simple. Why is that happening? Well, um, unfortunately it has a lot to do with human activity. So humans also like to live in lots of different places. And in order to get from place to place, we do things like build roads. Um, a lot of people who visit the aquarium mention they've seen turtles in the roadways. And in the spring, we talked about turtles crossing roadways in order to find good nesting sites. And that is definitely a time in which you would see turtles crossing roadways. Blanding turtles actually are fairly active throughout the year. They're spending a lot of their time in wetlands, but they'll move from wetland to wetland throughout the year. So they spend a lot of time traveling and travel pretty extensive distances um, in order to find good habitat and good food, things to eat, and also nesting sites. So they're spending a lot of time in roadways. Now, when we build those roads and they have to cross them, that increases the chances that they're gonna encounter things like cars in those roadways. So as we build more and more roads, um, their habitat gets broken into smaller and smaller areas and it increases the likelihood of adult mortality. Um, so probably what happened is populations of landing turtles in this area right here got smaller and smaller and eventually those turtles had a hard time finding mates and if they can't find mates we don't get babies and if we don't have babies we have no more blanding turtles so that's what we're trying to work on here in massachusetts is help keep the populations of blanding turtles healthy and robust so that it has they have an easy time finding mates and that way we always have blanding turtles on into the future so these guys are part of something called a Head Start program. Um, so what um, our friends over at Zoo New England do is they go out and they look for Blanding's turtles' nests and they monitor them all through late summer. And as soon as they hatch, they'll actually grab the babies out of the wild and they'll bring them inside and then folks like us um, or actually schools all over Massachusetts can volunteer to grow them and raise them over the winter. So typically what turtles are doing is they're overwintering or they're sleeping throughout the winter. Now, when you hatch and you're about the size of a peanut butter cup and you have a really short time to grow, that means in the spring, 
you're still about the size of a peanut butter cup, which makes you a really bite-sized snack for a lot of other animals that are waking up hungry in the spring. So what we do is rather than let these guys sleep, is we keep them awake all winter, we feed them a lot, and they grow. So by the time we release them in the spring, they're about the size of a three to four year old Blanding's turtles, which actually gives them about a 40% higher chance of survival than they would have on their own in the wild, which gives them a greater chance of making it to adulthood to that reproductive age. That's the other really tricky thing about Blanding's turtles is they're incredibly long lived. In the wild, a blaming turtle could live to be almost 80 years old. Um, this also means they're probably somewhere in the 15 to 20 year old range before they start reproducing. They have to make it 15 to 20 years before they can start laying their own eggs. So that's what we're trying to do is to help increase the possibility that they're going to get to that reproductive age, that reproductive size, and then they're going to have their own babies. Um, so you might be wondering what these guys are going to look like when they get bigger. Well, Blanding's turtles, they usually um, grow to be about 11 inches from the top of their shell to the bottom of their shell. So the plaster on here is what I have. This is of an adult Blanding's turtle and not even as big as a Blanding's turtle could be. They could be a little bit bigger than the shell that I'm showing you here. But as you can see, these teeny tiny guys have a lot of growing to do in order to get big enough um, in order to start laying their own eggs and having their own nests. So um, what we do is we bring them inside and we're caring for them here behind the scenes. Now my friend Jason is actually the one who's in charge of these blanding turtles. Um, and so he has the job of keeping them healthy and fed and then he'll actually get to go and help release them into the wild in the spring. Another really cool thing that our friends at Zoo New England do is they radio tag these turtles so that we can track them after release. So um, the <laughs> tricky thing about wetlands is it can be hard to find things in wetlands and this is where Blanding's turtles are hanging out. And Blanding's turtle shells are also perfectly camouflaged to hide in that habitat. So tracking down the adults to see that they are staying healthy or to find where they're nesting can be tricky. So if we radio tag these turtles when we have them in our care when they're small, it makes it easier for us to monitor them their entire lives and to make sure that they are actually getting to that nesting age, which is really cool. So, um, <laughs> as you can see, everybody is hiding underneath the island here. They're all peeking out and, and looking at us. So what I'd love to do now is to take one of these little guys out and give you guys a closer look at our one of our blending turtles. So I'm going to reach it in. just how small and cute these guys are. Um, Blanding's turtles, their shell changes quite a bit as they get older. So they have this really beautiful pattern on their scoots when they're small, which allows them to hide effectively. But as they'll grow, the, the pattern or the color of their scoop will change a little bit. Um, and they will also, usually the patterning on their face will change a little bit. There we go. Here's a nice close view of this guy. <laughs> so our Blanding's turtle upstairs, the pattern on his face is actually pretty unique. It almost looks like Skip has a very handsome mustache. But another distinguishing characteristic for Blanding's turtles is the yellow coloration on their throat. So that's also a good way to identify them if you're seeing a turtle in the wild. If they have that long yellow throat, uh, it is definitely possible that they are a Blanding's turtle. There he goes, coming out to say hi show off that long throat. Something else that I'll point out really quickly about our Blanding's turtle um, shell here is one of the ways that we keep track of who is who while we have them in our care are these little notches in their shell. So I mentioned these sections on their shell are called scoots and each um, individual scoot in this case is numbered and this is how we keep track of who is who. Um, so each little scoot represents a number and depending on where it's notched tells us which number this turtle is. So we can keep track of the individuals because when they're really small like this, sometimes they all look really similar and it can be hard to tell them apart. So I'm gonna pop this guy back into his home 
Um, and then I'll show you kind of what I mean about the scoop pattern being numbered. depending on where they're notched, we can know what their ID number is. So they are given this ID number before they even come to us, um, but it also helps us keep track of who's who when we have them in our care. Um, Jason told me the ones that he primarily focuses on are the numbers down here. Um, because we have only four of these guys, it makes it a little easier. We don't need to know up into the hundreds. Um, just these lower identification numbers help us out. Um, so most of ours are notched on the 30 right here, and then they are notched down here. The other thing you'll notice about this diagram in some of our turtles is that there are two notches, and the way that this works is you add it up. So this one would actually be uh, a number seven. So they only go one through five, um, but if you're having two knots, you add the two numbers together. So um, if we looked carefully at the turtle shell that I just pulled out, we could figure out what number turtle he was, which is pretty cool. Now, the other thing that I love to talk a little bit about with uh, animals in human care and also things like endangered species where we're releasing animals back into the wild for conservation purposes is some of the protocols that we have to follow in order to make sure that these guys stay really healthy while we're taking care of them. I get questions from visitors a lot of time about whether or not the animals here at the aquarium will go back into the wild and usually the answer is no because animals that are going to be released back into the wild have to be cared for in a really specific way because animals in zoos and aquariums are exposed to germs that animals in the wild population are not exposed to. So there's actually a lot of rules about this tank um, and I have to be really careful if I am going to handle the animals or come in contact with this tank not to be touching any of our other tanks here at the aquarium, especially other tanks that have reptiles. Reptiles have d germs and diseases just like we do. A frequent one that people are familiar with is salmonella. Reptiles can carry um, and give salmonella. Um, so if I were to touch a tank upstairs that had reptiles in it and then bring those germs down here to this tank, these guys can accidentally bring those germs with them back out to the wild. So this tank actually has a lot of specific rules so that we're keeping these animals really healthy and then we're also helping to protect the wild population of Blanding's turtles once they're released back into the wild. So that's just an interesting fact that I love to share with our visitors about the kind of special measures that we take if we are going to release animals back in the wild and the reason why most animals that come to zoos and aquariums won't ever be back part of the wild population because we want to keep those animals in the wild population really, really healthy. At this point, I would love to open up the floor to questions. If we have any questions out there, make sure that you're posting them so I can answer them for you. Um, do we have any questions this morning? Anyone joining us that has a curious mind? Our Three questions, but we have a lot of people following though. We have hi's from Leslie. Jerry and um, Shayna, so we're really excited to have all these people with us. Amazing. Well, thank you guys for joining us this morning. Again, um, these are animals that are going to live solely behind the scenes here at the New England Aquarium because of all those rules and regulations about keeping them healthy. But if you want to check out a Blanding's turtle when you visit us here at the New England Aquarium, keep your eyes out during our live animal presentations. Again, our adult Blanding's turtle, Skip, uh, is a total ham. He loves coming out for presentations and helping people learn a little bit more about Blanding's turtles. Um, if you're interested in helping out with this uh, Blanding's turtle conservation, um, do some quick Google search. You'll pretty quickly find Zoo New England's page all about that Head Start program. Again, we're not the only ones that help Head Start these turtles. Um, lots of schools all over Massachusetts participate in this program. Also, lots of wildlife centers and other institutions throughout New England are helping protect these Blanding turtles as well and giving them a good start. We have some, a couple questions. Amazing. Um, Liz wants to know, where do they get released? Where do they get released? That's a great question, and I actually didn't mention that, so thank you for reminding me, Liz. Um, so 
these guys, when they're collected from the wild, it is recorded where they came from. So for the Blanding turtles, what we're doing is we're releasing them back to the place where they were collected from. Um, so I'm not sure where these guys came from, but I know our Blanding turtles last year came from Groton, Massachusetts. So um, Jason actually went out to Groton, Massachusetts in order to bring them back to, with um, Zoo New England to the place where they're found. Um, Another really interesting thing about turtles is they often have pretty good sight fidelity, so they kind of know where they want to be and where their habitat should be, including good nesting sites. So um, what they're doing right now is just bringing them right back to the places that they were found. And again, that's kind of depending on where the nest was that they were collected from. Another question from Jennifer, she wanted to know how big they get. How big do Blanding turtles get? So I did mention earlier, um, but I can show you guys again. Again, this is an adult Blanding turtle shell. This is not a fully grown adult Blanding turtle shell. They get to be about 11 inches long, so just shy of a foot. So they're one of the larger species of freshwater turtle here in Massachusetts. Um, so they are pretty noticeable when you spot them, but they do spend a lot of their time in the water. Um, so they are really well camouflaged when they're in that watery habitat. So keep your eyes peeled if you're ever out in um, wetlands in Massachusetts looking for turtles. Any other questions out there? That's what we have for now. Fantastic. Well, if you do have additional questions while you're watching today, as always, we love questions. So don't be shy about asking them. If you have questions after the fact, post them. We'll answer them for you. Um, and for those of you who are going to watch this after the fact, you too can ask questions and we will answer them for you on our Facebook. One last question. One last question. From Amazing. Christian, how long do they live? How long do they live? Yeah, so Blanding's turtles are pretty long-lived turtle species. Um, they live to be into their 80s, so up to 80 years old in the wild. In zoos and aquariums, they can live a little bit longer because, again, they don't have any predators, they're not worrying about crossing roadways, and um, they have excellent medical care here at the New England Aquarium. So um, in zoos and aquariums, a little bit longer, but in the wild, probably around 80 years old. I know we said one last, there's one more. <laughs> Keep um, them coming, guys. Bill had a good question. Are they a protected species? Are they a protected species? So because they are an endangered species, they are protected under the Endangered Species Act. So they absolutely are protected. Um, so this means that um, their habitats are protected um, by mass fish and wildlife, um, but also they cannot be taken from the wild or kept as pets. In fact, our adult landing turtle that we use for live animal presentations was being kept in somebody's swimming pool before he came here to the New England Aquarium. Swimming pools are not a great habitat for turtles for so many reasons, and because Skip was an endangered species, absolutely not allowed to be kept as a pet. So that's actually another tip that I will uh, share with you guys is you shouldn't take turtles from the wild to keep as pets. If you're looking to get a turtle as a pet, do your research, find out what species you're allowed to have in the place where you live, because oftentimes there are rules about turtles. Um, they're a really long-lived pet, um, so it's something that you're gonna have for most of your life, so be ready to care for that animal through its entire life. Remember, these guys can live to be 80 years old. Um, and also just be really careful about if you don't want that pet anymore, not to release it into the wild. Find somebody else who will take that animal um, and care for it. Um, because a lot of times pet turtles are released into the wild and become what's called an invasive species. So they get into the wild population and they can take over space and habitat, which can be a big problem for endangered species like landing turtles. So there are lots of things that um, both um, local and national um, folks are doing in order to protect landing turtles both here in Massachusetts and throughout um, the United States and even Canada. They're a protected species in Canada as well. Any other questions out there? Fantastic. Well, thank you guys again for joining us here on Facebook Live for our first Friday. Um, stay tuned. Nick and I will be back uh, for the first Friday for next month. Um, we haven't picked a topic yet, so if you also have anything that you would really love to learn about, feel free to post that in our comments for this video as well, and we can see what we can do in order to get you guys 
So more information about animals you're really interested in because we love hearing your feedback and being able to share these things with you. Um, I hope you enjoyed getting to see these teeny tiny blanding turtles today. We'll try to keep you posted about their growth um, while we have them. So we got them in late September and we'll probably have them through mid-May. So lots of cute blandings action coming at you um, at least through the winter. So keep your eyes peeled on our social media for that as well. And again, thank you for joining us this morning on Facebook Live. Bye friends.